little special time. Get to go on a road with Zeb. Going up to cover some good wrestling this weekend, but uh, we're gonna go back into the saga of Dirty Zeb and the magical day when the uniting of Zeb Miller and Martin Floriani took place. Why don't you tell us that story? Uh, University Nationals, 2007. I saw this guy walking around talking into a camera and I think it's like a lot what, what people see now whenever they see me talking to the camera I think they're just, it's crazy who's he talking to well talking to the people at home but anyhow uh, so I see this guy walking around he's kind of wiry Italian looking fellow so as I'm walking out I was the first year was at Akron in Akron Ohio he's like he's got like bags slung every which direction on his body and uh, like straps and he's like got a phone it was all beat up and he like drops his phone and the battery pops out and like he's clearly in distress and uh which now I I find is really not distressed that's just kind of how he is right <laughs> right no comment no comment but no he's just like kind of frantic and uh so I'm like hey man you alright he's like yeah uh my you know the people that I'm rolling with took off I'm like, all right, well, where are you staying? He's like, oh, it's like a mile away. I'm like, okay. He's like, I can walk or something, or just if you could just help me find directions to get there. I'm like, well, where are you staying? He's like, Fairlawn, and that's like northwest Akron. North Ak northwest Akron. And he's like, ah, it's not too North Akron, or, you know, uh, Fairlawn's like, you know, that's a good 15 minute drive from the University of Akron. So. And I give this crazy dude who I don't know a ride. I don't know who he was. I don't know him. And, and he's just like, I don't know if you've ever talked to him. He's a real forward thinker and he's very aggressive and uh, confident. And he's like, yeah, this website. And he's, he's talking about how great this website is and what he's going to do. And we're going to make it so, you know, every college duel can be someday, you know, broadcast. And, you know, not just all the big schools are going to get duels. And I'm just like, yeah, this guy's nuts, whatever. I'm like, oh, okay, man. You know, I'm like listening to him. He's got like this rant. He goes on. He's like, well, you know, let me hook you up for uh, giving me a ride. What can I do or whatever? And he's like, I said, well, you know what? Uh, at the time, I was helping Jim Andresi with the club at uh, the Golden Pride uh, Wrestling Club at Kent State. And I'm like, well, can you interview our coach Andresi uh, at Kent State? I'm like, he... Uh, we just need it. We need something. It sounds like what you're doing is a good thing or whatever. He's like, yep, no problem. And he actually, you know, he interviewed Jim and he did like a whole video on Kent State clawing their way back. That's what it was called. And Jim was actually one of the first speakers on the site when he was doing, going around interviewing. Like, I think Jim Zaleski was one of, Lenny Zaleski, John Azevedo, I think, was one of the first guys. And Tom Ryan, a lot of those guys in 2007 were the first guys on the site and it was awesome. And then we kind of exchanged emails a couple of times. Then the following year for the 2008 state tournament, I was actually helping out with the, teach at, the school I teach at uh, Riverside. We had a couple guys from the state, so we went down there. And he actually, Martin called me, and we, and he gave me a camera. Well, actually, I was able to borrow our, ca our club camera. And uh, because the club bought it, the parents bought this camera. And I was able to film all the Riverside kids' matches. And then I did like all the Division II finals and a bunch of the semifinals, and it was uh, it was cool. And that was kind of the beginning of, of how it started. It was just like being a good Samaritan to somebody that he looked like he was in duress, and I think he, you know, legitimately was. When, and now I know what it's like to get to a city and kind of be stranded, uh, or be in a foreign country and weird things happen. <laughs> Jim and I kind of got kind of got the uh, we definitely got that the summer that. Absolute insanity in Kazan, Russia. This this summer, it, it, there's no videos we could shoot to give it or do it justice. Like, but you know, you know, you see someone in in, in distress. You know, my dad always kind of, my dad always used to help some. My dad was always into helping people. Like, I remember we had a rest stop one time. My dad gave some guy. It was probably just like a guy was gonna go buy, you know, alcohol with it. I was like, oh, I need 20 bucks. And my dad gave him 20 bucks. And my dad's always been about helping people. So I was like, if my dad can help people. So it's just something that rubs off, you know what I mean? It's just, 
whatever. And you made a comment today, like, we forgot your coat. Uh, and you were like, and the people in Denmark kind of said, made an off-color remark to you about America. You left your bag on the bus or something. And uh, they said to you, well, you're not American. No one's going to steal it. That's kind of the people I come from, the people, the Midwest people who will, will always help people. When we see people in distress or whatever, that's kind of what it came from. I mean, it, it's been interesting, you know, when you can meet someone like that and listen to them, think they're crazy, and then when you see genuinely how driven of a person he is. And, like, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get another no comment from Joe, but there's times you want to strangle the guy. No comment. <laughs> but, man, like... He is always pushing forward, and it's like, look what it's done for wrestling. Look what it's done for wrestling, and it's like, and if there's things he don't agree with, he'll, he'll still let you cover it, or, you know, he doesn't care. He wants everything to be covered, and he wants, he wants to do what's best for the sport. I, I, and, I'm, you know, I, I'm glad that I helped someone like that out, so it was good. All right, so... So how kind of you got going in wrestling? Let's talk about now uh, type of coverage you do that's kind of revolutionized um, ways that all of our websites do coverages from time to time. Coined the term shotgun coverage. How did the shotgun coverage come to be? What is it? What's a shotgun coverage? The shotgun coverage. Okay, I had this camera that I bought my first year when I was teaching at Riverside in 2005 and it was a, like a hybrid or whatever. You could snap photos with it, and then it had, you know, the little, I want to say they're 8 millimeter, not 8 millimeter, but uh, little DV digital video tapes. So at that point, my best friend moved out to Portland, Oregon, and we went, We were, and he just had a camera, and I came home after I got another job, and uh, the, the camera just I, I couldn't get it out of my hands and I I want to shoot and I want to show people what's going on all the time so I just sh I shoot a lot of video I shoot a lot of video and I and I know like it gets annoying to some people like I think uh, we went on the trip this summer and all the kids uh, that went on the East Coast trip with me uh, Princeton Penn uh, you, you uh, Maryland the Naval Academy, Virginia, Virginia Tech, and UNC, those kids that were with me, three of them are seniors now, uh, Brad Wookie, Harrison Hightower, and uh, Drew Stone and my nephew Ian Miller. We, I shot a lot of video, and I think that the kids, they genuinely enjoyed it. Now, when we went out west, Ian and I shot a lot of video. I mean, a lot of video, and I think there's interviews and wrestling's great, but like, to see what someone who's like outgoing in the wrestling community does every day and like the things they'll do like climbing Mount St. Helens uh, you know I've done that the last two summers that, that's something that's really cool and that that's cool and it's, it's a person in the wrestling community doing it and yeah I just want people to see what's going on you know I want people to see St. Basil's and uh in Moscow and Lemons too which you can't film inside of nor did we get inside but we will we will but like, those are cool things, and I, I think that, um, I think we're getting a lot of people that come to the site and might just look at the nonsense. Or at least we're gonna start to. Nonsense? I don't know what you're talking about. But you know, that, that that's the shotgun cover, just shooting a lot of video, and it just stems from the, the coolest thing I've ever done with the video and the camera, the hard drive camera, um, in June 1st, 2008, I actually, you, you might not know this, but like I went over and I talked to my my, uh, my grandfather, Ferd, Ferd Miller, and I have a brother named Ferd Miller too, but, and uh, I got to sit down with my grandpa for like a couple hours, and I just, I turned the camera on and he was like, he was in a, a stage where he ended up having colon cancer and, you know, dying a year later, but we just sat and we ran the video and I just asked him questions and had a conversation with him. And something like that, you really see how valuable video is. 
So now, you know, everyone in my family, I made a DVD of it. And actually, he passed away right before you and I went to, to, Kazan, to, to Russia. And I asked my dad, I was like, hey, do you want me to not go to Russia? I won't go, obviously. You know, I don't want to miss Papa for his funeral. And he's like, no, you got to go, man. Uh, you know, he would have wanted you to go. And that's something that uh, you got to do that. That's, that's a good thing, you know. Um, you got to go. Because, you know, my grandpa was one of the greatest guys I know. And I wanted to be there. But at that point, we had already made all the arrangements. And, you know, and no one in my family judged me for it. That was cool, I, I thought. And uh, we went over there, and I thought we did something that was good for our community. It was good for the world community of wrestling. And it was something that was bigger than me. And I thought that was pretty cool. But the shotgun coverage and shooting so much video, I think it's born out of the fact that I was sitting down with my grandpa that one day for uh, it was an hour and a half of video and learning about my ha family history and my grandpa being one of ten kids nine girls and him um, that's something that's pretty cool to me and I don't think you can really put a price on it and I put together in a DVD and they played it and I've distributed I, don't, I couldn't even tell you how many copies of it I've made but that, that's something that I don't I, I didn't shoot enough video and I you know I, I don't regret it or whatever I think it was the right thing but the shotgun coverage is definitely now like I want to film everything it's important you know filming things and documenting things is pretty cool and important I think you and I in 40 or 50 years we can look back on the video in Red Square and be like something would be pretty cool don't you think oh yeah and like if you look at all the videos we shot in Russia once again something we can look back and show kids and future generations of the family and, you know I don't really think you can put a price on it it's pretty invaluable so that's the shotgun cover man. nice all right what's your uh, your favorite coverage you've done well besides the favorite coverage besides going and sitting down with my grandpa that day or you know I already told you my grandpa thing is the that was the best thing ever. You know, it wasn't even a wrestling thing. That was the best thing ever. But, uh, man, that's a great question. I really enjoyed going to Russia with you. I like going out to the uh, the two road trips this summer. This summer was just, like, crazy, man. I think the East Coast trip was really good with taking all those dudes, all those kids I've been coaching since they were, like, in uh, elementary and middle school, and now they're all high schoolers. That was that was special because um, actually two of the four kids committed to schools we visited. So that was special. I really enjoyed the, the East Coast, the Great American Road Trip. I'm going to probably do it again this summer. And uh, going out west, man, that's special out there. I mean, uh, going out there and, you know, they got the left coast wrestling out there. and Going out there, I think I think the west coast needs us more. I think, need you know, if you and I could move to the west coast, I think we could really really you know help wrestling over there and that, that's what this is all about in the end helping wrestling so going out there seeing all the sites and seeing that you know those those uh kids out there whether it be the oregon state kids or uc davis or stanford kids or whatever they they're doing the same things that these kids are here just in a way cooler place <laughs> the west coast is awesome i mean my family weren't here, I'd already be gone. I'd, I would be out there. I would be in Corvallis or Portland. or I, Davis is a pretty cool town. You know, San Francisco is a cool town. You know, Stanford, San Luis Obispo. Those are all great places. And, and not that there's anything wrong with Edinburgh, where we're going right now. But, like, you know, you can't go surfing. And uh, we just got into Pennsylvania. So we're actually going to be getting off the exit here soon. But, you know, going all over and seeing those places, I think those are pretty – those are top-notch, man. I don't think you can really put a value on the coverages. All right, let's talk about uh, – so you did uh, for a couple years. I mean, you teach all week, and then you'd go all weekend. I don't even know how you did it all, but – and film wrestling and put all that on Flow Wrestling. Since then, now you have your own website um, with Jared. Jared Offer, man. And that's Gohio Cast. What, uh, tell, tell us about that website. Well, you know, like, 
Martin and I had kind of talked about it, and it was like, I didn't really need a website. I was like, well, you have a website, and I like it, but I don't know, man. I, I told you, there's days I don't go and look at our website. I, I, I'm i not like, I, I'm not, oh, this is the rest area. But I'm not bent on uh, being a website tycoon or something like that. I, I want wrestling to get better. And it's like, I wish I could do Go Oregon or something like that because I think they need it more in Ohio. But Go Ohio Cast, you know, Go Ohio Cast is uh, Greater Ohio. So I'm, you know, I live on the. We're actually getting off here at Six N. Uh, I live. You and I have been driving about um, not even forty minutes when we're in Pennsylvania. We got about another, you know, fifteen twenty minutes here on Six N. We'll be at Edinburgh, but Greater Ohio area. Pennsylvania, let's just get that streak. It's the most undercovered state, number one. Number two, obviously, New Jersey. Because if you look, the wrestling there is amazing in those two states. The high school, the college, whatever you want to call it, it's undercovered. And there's no doubt about it. And, and, and there's no doubt about it, Ohio gets the most coverage. I mean, you know that, right? Everybody knows that. If you go to the website, you're going to see. And it's because that's where I live, and that's where my family is, and I'm not leaving. You know, I, 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 I would love to move to the West Coast or do something cool like that, but my family's here, and I like, I like going to be able to see, you know, my nephew wrestle or go watch a Kent State duel. You know, I, those are things that are close to me, and then those are things I can get to in an evening and be home, back home, and, uh, up and ready to go to school the next day, and you know, uh, that's that's something I put a, a high value on. You know, seeing my family, seeing my friends. All right, so what does it take? I mean, I think uh, personally, when I look around, people think what we do is super technical. Uh, what type of person would it take for you know the guy to step up in uh, Pennsylvania, or you know, in some of these states that you say are undercovered? What is it, what kind of person? can do uh, what you're doing right now? Well, I'm literally, um, my, they had to actually surgically shave my brow down because I'm Cro-Magnon. <laughs> it's so easy a caveman can do it. You know, it's not hard. I am not like a tech whiz. I actually had, at school, one of my computers was like all on the fritz, my personal teacher computer, and I was like, I had to call in the tech people. You know, like, if you're a technical person, you can fix that computer yourself. I'm not. You know, these hard drive cameras, we got to get something going, man. Jared, I think, Jared Opper, the other guy with Go Hiocast, my, uh, my homeboy, he, we're going to try and get something going with JVC because we use JVCs, and they are warriors, man. Those, those cameras, we have those JVC Evrios. They're awesome. My brother, Tate. Him and his wife got them, and they can do flow wrestling coverages. They can do, you know, Oregon Clay versus Oak Harbor. They can do, you know, Toledo Central Catholic versus Oregon Clay or whatever it may be, you know, and that, that, I mean, if my brother Tate can't fix something with a hammer, uh, he can't fix it. And he can do, he, he has the capability right now to do a flow wrestling coverage or a Go Ohio cast coverage, and it's not hard, man, and, and we really... We do need that person, but like, it's easy, but it's not. You know, like you and I were talking about it today. It's easy, but it's not. You know, you gotta have somebody with personality, and knows how to talk to people, and knows wrestling. So, is that more important, you think, than being a wizard with a computer? Well, I think that getting the, getting the content. It's great to hear me like say ridiculous things when we're filming or whatever. And I know wrestling. I know wrestling real well, you know. I mean, I wrestled in five year, for five years in college. I wrestled since I was a little kid. I know wrestling. Um, that is important, knowing wrestling. The content's most important. A non-wrestling person can do what we want done, in my opinion. I think it gives it a lot of value. I think I add a lot of value because of the experience level. And, and you know, like, um, I know what it's like to have someone foot carry bow and arrow me. I know what it's like to, you know, have a knee surgery or, you know, a hand fight with somebody hard for 
seven minutes. I know what that's like. Um, so you can make the connections. Yeah, but I think that's cool. And I think that that gives it a lot of credibility with these guys on interview them, They realize I'm a wrestling guy and that uh, I've been in the fight before. I've been in the, I've had my, I've stuck my nose in there, you know, not afraid to. I still roll every now and again. I like it. It's, it's, it's kind of getting away. But um, I think that somebody who loves the sport and's never wrestled could do it. But I think that's what I bring to the table. I think people like that that you and I were wrestlers. We were Division One guys. And were we great? No, but um, I think it still gives you some credibility with people. But I think a non, I, I, I think a person who loves the sport and can press record to start and stop a match can do this. I mean, I think it's that simple. Uh, but you gotta love wrestling. You gotta really love wrestling. If you don't love wrestling, it's not for you. If you love wrestling, I, I think that's the most important thing, loving wrestling and knowing it. To, to do the coverages. Yeah, oh yeah. Technical wizardry, it's bottom of the barrel on my priority list. All is, right. is that good or do you want to know more about you want to know about the stash yeah what the we've got some very extreme close-ups that I'm, I don't think you're aware of since this interview started mm. <laughs> stashies Must, at Nashies yeah the, the mustache is obviously born out of the the stashies at Nashies and it's like it's just it's a it works on Joel Greenlee it works on you know uh it doesn't work on a whole lot of people, but in our generation, you, you and I, you know, that, that uh, 25 to 35 generation, the stash is not in. And the generation behind us, the stash is not in. And quite frankly, it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's a bad choice, I would say. But um, <laughs> I, I think that, you know, last year I did it as like a social experiment when I first did it. And I got some ridiculous <laughs> pictures from my buddy Scotty Burnett's birthday. And it's like, people are like, dude, the stash is great. And then when I walk in, there's students. I think the students are like, I have a, a, a senior, and the senior was like, do you really think it looks good? Or are you serious? And I'm like, not at all. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's something that uh, stashies and nashies, it goes back to like the, the uh, you know Joel Greenlee told me you got to make things an event and you got to make it special you got to make it fun maybe it's a gimmick or whatever but you know stashes and ashes it, yeah it's a gimmick but it creates a little more excitement along with it and I think some of the uh, I saw a couple of the Iowa guys had them last year I think the Ohio University guys got on board because Coach Greenlee has the fear of the stash one and he's got a big hearty you know Salak stash <laughs> but like anything to make wrestling special man. You, and if it's growing a ridiculous mustache and looking like a creeper, I guess that's what I'll do for the sport, you know? But, uh, yeah, man, it's just, uh, the stash is, it, it's not a good choice, but I think that, I think that people buy into the stash, he's at Nash, he's and it creates a buzz. You know, Jim Harsha, create a riot, you know, start a riot. Make it an event, right? You got it. Uh, you, you, man, you, you got me. All right, here's uh, one more thing I want to talk about, and that's go-karts. Oh, my God. Dude, I, you don't even have enough hard drive space right now for me to sit and tell you about our experience in Kazan. What Do you want me to start with the train ride? I just want go-karts. You just want go-karts? Starting at midnight, I believe, or no, so. No, so it was way later. Okay, so we're in Kazan. We go to this like bootleg carnival. <laughs> Remember like a Ferris wheel and everything? We go there and like. And Tigran. And Tigran. Tigran. Oh, Tigran's the man. Yeah. He's got a heart the size of uh, uh, size of Edinburgh University where we're going. Mami Ashvili. Mami Ashvili. But anyhow, he he uh, um, Mike Miguel Mami Ashvili is the president of the Russian Wrestling Federation and like a gold medalist. But anyhow, and I, we interviewed him. It was kind of cool. I think T-Ground was real stoked about that. Real <laughs> stoked. Right, right. He loved that. But anyhow, T-Ground, we go out. We're like, yeah, let's go out. First off, we're staying in somebody's house. You, you can't, I can't tell the go-kart story without telling that. <laughs> so we go, fly with it. we go and we cover wrestling all day. It was like July 5th. 
No, it was July 4th, as a matter of fact. When people ask you, is there a 4th of July in Russia? Yes, there is. They just don't care about America's independence. But <laughs> <laughs> we're in... We're, we're in... This, we're on the train from Moscow to Kazan. Also, you don't just get on Expedia or Travelocity or Priceline.com and book a flight there. You get on a train and go on a train everywhere you're going to go. Right? Yeah. Yeah, the airports yeah. aren't like... They don't... It's not like here. But anyhow... We get on trains from Moscow to Kazan. We get off the train. Actually, Gonzalev, the gold medalist, is on our train. Mm-hmm. So, like, don't even think that they're Olympic gold medalists travel in a, you know, Gulf Stream or whatever it is. Um, the G4 or whatever. But um, the dude's on our... He's a 2004 Olympic gold medalist. He's sleeping in the same little room we are. But anyhow... Um, this dude, this like guy smoking a cigarette, <laughs> belly hanging out. Of course, doesn't speak any English because why would he? He's like him and Tur- Tigran argue. It's for, for what it looked like was <laughs> arguing. When they talk, you but they, they talk. Just throw down in fisticuffs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like the remember the old the the sport the yeah. the sport people were trying to get money from him You're for telling vodka. Like five stories now. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but like. <laughs> How about that one? The old lady almost shoved him into the road and into the oncoming traffic. Anyhow, back, back to the train. Back to the train. So we get out of this Tigran and this guy argue, which is actually talking in Russia. And uh, <laughs> takes us to his house, gets in there, tells his mom, this like really old lady. She like packs all her stuff up and leaves. And he gives us the key and the guy leaves. So we stayed in these people's house. So, 4th of July, we, 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 it was the most unsettling thing, and it was the most uncomfortable half an hour of my life. Joe? Yeah. We just thought they were going to we come back scared. and take... Yeah, yeah, we thought they were going to come back and take all our stuff. And, or murder us in the middle of the night. I don't want them to. They can have my stuff. <laughs> Anyhow, 4th of July, we go out. We're like, oh, yeah, we want to... We want to uh, go to the... Go out and do something. And we go to the carnival with the bootleg uh, Ferris wheel. And it's just like a tent. We're in like a tent, almost like a wooden pavilion area. And all these kids are like boozing up. We go there and, you know, we're, we're hanging out, enjoying a couple of drinks. And uh, Tigran just sits down at this table and just starts gaming up on some ladies. <laughs> Joe, his hands are his hands are tied, but I'm single at the time. So I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah. So we, you know, try and game up on uh, girls who don't speak any English, little to none. And that surprisingly worked pretty well. So these girls, we go out, we walk out when they're shutting the thing down. And, like, they're like, it's like, yeah, one, two in the morning. They're like, hey, do you want to go? I don't know. They said it in Russian. But it's like Tigran. They're like, we want to take you guys somewhere. And we're like, okay. And, uh. So we flag a person down. We don't get a cab. Because that's not what you do in Russia. You put your two fingers out like this. And then you... And then he, he he argues with somebody. And then they take you where you want to go. And then we, that's when we heard that song, Russian Gales. Yeah, Russian Gales. It was pretty cool. And those girls were like bouncing to it. And I'm all like, Joe's not single. I am. Too bad for him. And that was cool, because, like, they got into it, and we were, you know, we had beats, you know? We didn't have any glow sticks, though. But, uh, <laughs> so, it is literally like a scene from Hostel. They drive us back into, like, this back alley, and there's no, like, street lights or anything Kazan. And it was, like, uh, short nights or whatever. Well, not, not white nights, but, you know, pretty short, three, four hours of darkness. So it's, like, two... And uh, we, they drive us back in this alley, and the the, the Russian guy who's driving us, um, his car bottoms out on a speed bump. <laughs> so he takes us back, and there's like six dudes standing around drinking like vodka and hanging out. And then like the, we get out, Tigran pays the dude, and we go into this big warehouse where six guys are standing outside in a narrow alleyway. Yeah. We walk through like this maze and like through this like long hallway and then we come out into a bar and a gigantic go-karting arena. 
Mind you.